Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well, this is Chaitan here from Devil Cube and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. This is an Illustrator tutorial and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create a monogram logo. So what is a monogram logo? It's basically a logo which consists of two or more letters, um, you know, mixed and joined in a very creative way but very distinctive, uh, uh, very distinctively, uh, you know, merged uh, to give a single effect of a single logo but two different letters or three letters at the same time. So if you just Google monogram logo, you probably, you know, kind of understand or if you, obviously if you're seeing the thumbnail, that's what a monogram logo is. So um, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do it in Illustrator because seriously, I do not, you know, want anybody to be learning logo designing in Photoshop. Uh, you know, that's not the right way to, uh, you know, do designing for logos. Um, so I'm going to show you the tips and tricks and all the important parts, elements, aspects of a monogram logo which make it stand out from the other logos. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be going to file and I'm going to choose new. I'm going to set in create a new document. So for my designs, I usually choose for logos rather. I choose 1000 by 1000 uh, pixels. All right. I'm just going to go to units and click on pixel. I click on OK. All right. So in today's video, as you can see from the thumbnail, I'm going to be making a letter Z and a letter D logo. And the reason I'm doing it is because it's quite rare combination i mean i've not seen anybody having this you know letter combination in the name or such so anyway all right so here we have a blank canvas so what i'm actually going to do now is um i'm gonna go ahead and start off with az now there are a couple of ways of doing the monogram logo you can use a font or you can use the pen tool or you can use the rectangular tool but for this purpose i have a little bit something creative in mind so i'm going to go ahead and uh you know get the pen tool by pressing p on the keyboard and uh, here we are. So you want to make sure you want to go to view and you want to choose a smart guides turn on. And uh, I really suggest you to guys uh, download, uh, really suggest you guys to download Adobe uh, Illustrator CC uh, because it's a very, uh, it has a lot of more features than the previous version. But anyhow, uh, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by clicking and I'm going to start off with the Z. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag out a pretty big, you know, uh, letter Z over here. And as you can see here, it's going to help me snap right to the center, uh, to light uh, vertically aligning it to the first point. And I'm going to click away and uh, I hope, yep, yeah, and click. And uh, there we go. We have our first letter. So you want to make sure that your foreground color is set to, let's actually set this to none and your stroke is set to a black color. Now I want to have a thicker stroke. So I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to make sure I'm in the uh, selection tool and I'm gonna go to the stroke and probably set that to 50 and that's gonna give me this big uh, you know uh, stroke so maybe I want a little bit thicker so I'm gonna probably go for a hundred uh, maybe hundred is too much let's try for 60 not quite sure uh, we can actually go for 70 as well uh, let's try 70 yep and uh, that looks better now the only thing is I need to make it you know uniform because it doesn't look uniform so I'm gonna go take this point and I'm just gonna go move it out to the side so until it matches. Now, if you want to make it match perfectly, you know, press Ctrl R, which is gonna give you the rulers, and uh, just go ahead and drag out a ruler, place it right over there. You can do the same thing on this side as well. And now I'm gonna select this point and just move it up to, and it's gonna help me snap to the uh, the ruler as well. I'm gonna do the same thing and just snap that out. And if you don't hide the rules, you can just right, you can just click on the ruler. Uh, right click and choose hide guides or the the, the shortcut key is command uh, or control semicolon right there we go all right that's looking good so the next one is going to go ahead and create the letter d so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press p on my keyboard again and uh i'm going to go actually go to a new layer uh let's actually no let's let's leave it like so i don't want a new layer um i'm going to go ahead and uh create the letter D so you want to make sure that the letter D is as the same thickness uh, the same height and the same width so uh, I'm gonna come over here uh, come over here uh, let's see yeah there we go um, that's actually yeah no, yeah we can do this okay and then do the same thing hold down shift and then hold down shift and then close this up and there we go we have a box but it no way looks like a D so what I'm gonna do is with the layers with the object selected I'm gonna come here to the direct selection tool and the shortcut is a and I'm gonna click on this anchor point and hold down shift select this anchor point and it's gonna be these two uh, the circles kind of thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it out you see I'm gonna get something that looks like this 
But if I move that out completely to the side, make sure you press V to select the entire object. And uh, we have a letter D. Now we want to make it as the same size and the height of the Z. So I'm going to go ahead and just place it exactly like so. Uh, I'm going to move it up to the side so it kind of aligns right there. And uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to select this point, hold down shift, select this point, hold down shift, select this point. And I'm just going to hold and move this to the left side. Okay, looks like we have some issues. So select all these together, hold down shift this point as well. Okay, now we can move this and uh, it, should, it should be perfectly aligned. So let's do a little and there we go. That's looking great. All right, so we have a letter Z and maybe I'm going to put it in a different color so we can ha actually see what's going on. Maybe I'm just going to throw that to a red color. Yep, uh, that's looking good. All right, now how do we go ahead and merge these? Now there are a couple of ways which you can do uh, to decide how you want to merge them and uh, I usually draw out a sketch but for this I don't have a sketch drawn. So uh, I'm going to use my creativity right over here and uh, do it myself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the letter D by pressing V on my keyboard and selecting the entire D and I'm going to select the Z as well and I'm going to go actually make a copy of both. I'm going to press Ctrl C, Ctrl F and that's going to give me a copy and I'm just going to go ahead and just Hold down shift and move it to the right of the canvas. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be needing it. Maybe I'm gonna be needing it in the next part of this video. Oh, move it. All right. So we're gonna focus on only this. So I'm gonna select these two layers. Press Ctrl R to get rid of the rulers. And then I'm gonna go to Object and choose Expand. Uh, uh, expand. Yeah. So now if I click on OK, what it does is we actually have a single object which is no longer a stroke. These are two individual objects, right? So that's two individual objects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down shift and just bring this uh, letter D down a couple of, you know, uh, pixels. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make a copy of this again, pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl F and bring it down. So, we, so you know, we have the same gap uh, between the two logos. So if I just snap it right to place and delete this. Uh, we see we're going to have something that looks like this. And I'm going to make a copy of this again by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl F. And uh, what I'm going to do this time is going to move it this side. And I'm going to delete this. So now we can see that this gap, the vertical gap and the horizontal gap is exactly the same as the thickness of the logo. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in my own element now. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the rectangular tool. I'm going to come over here. And it just create a nice re nice rectangle like so and if I just click away it's gonna look something like this now I'm gonna go ahead and actually select all of this uh, and set this to the same color so I'm actually gonna select this and uh, select this so you know kind of looks more better all right so we have something that looks like this okay so now we're gonna go ahead and actually make all the adjustments and changes that we want so uh, I'm going to select the D over here. I'm going to press Ctrl C, Ctrl F. That's going to make a copy. And I'm going to go to Object, uh, Path, and choose Offset Path. And then what the Offset Path does is it creates an outline stroke of the entire object that you've selected. If I click on Preview, you see you're going to have something like this. And I'm going to set this to 20. Uh, this time, let's try 30. All right. Uh, and I'm gonna just going to go ahead and click on OK. Now, why did I do this? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a couple of parts of this logo. Uh, so you're probably you're gonna understand when I show you guys. So I'm gonna select all of this, press Shift M on my keyboard, which is gonna make the Shape Builder tool, or the Shape Builder tool is also here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to this part of the logo, hold on Alt, and that's gonna give me a minus sign below the arrow mark, and I'm just gonna click away, and that's gonna take out that part. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Uh, rather than you know going ahead and deleting it, I'm just going to leave it like so and see where else I want the gap. So if I select all of this, uh, I want a gap right over here. Uh, so I wanted to cut uh, this part. So what I'm going to do is select the rectangular tool again this time. And I want a thickness as same as this part. So I'm going to select that, make a rectangle, come here and drop it down on this. And as you can see here, we can actually select all these parts, uh, shift M. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this part, right? There we go. And right click, choose ungroup. Okay, we can select this individually. Let's just go ahead and delete these parts. Uh, okay, we kind of have to use a shape builder on all of this. So Shift M, uh, delete all these unnecessary parts. 
click on OK and uh, you see we have something that looks like this. Um, we can do the same thing for this part as well. So I'm going to select the Z this time and I'm going to object path, uh, offset path and click on preview and click on OK. And uh, this time select all this part, shift M and go ahead and just take out this part. All right, we can take out this part as well. And if you click on OK, it looks pretty bad right now because we obviously can go ahead and clean up everything. Uh, which we will do right now uh, just before we finish off the logo. So we want a gap over here as well. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose ungroup so I can individually delete the unnecessary items. Uh, we can select this part, right click, choose ungroup. Uh, right, there we go. That gets deleted. Uh, hold down shift, hold shift, shift M and we can just manually cut out these unnecessary parts of the logo. Let's go ahead and start deleting everything. The outside part, oops. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's click away and see what we get. Okay, we look, this is looking pretty cool, but not too great at the moment. Um, so we're gonna go select this one again. Press Control C, Control F. Go to Object, Path, Offset Path. I kind of forgot to delete this part. So I'm gonna select all this, Shift M, and I'm gonna delete, oops. Shift M, uh, hold on Alt, click over here, and it's gonna get rid of that part. And we can go ahead and get rid of the unnecessary part. So there we go, we have this nice cut over here. We got a cut over here. Uh, we wanna cut over here as well. So uh, let's do that real quick. I'm gonna go grab a rectangular tool and just create a box like this so I get the same thickness. Uh, put this on top right over here. Select these two, uh, Shift M, and just start cutting out these parts. There we go. There we have a nice gap for us here. Uh, yeah, that is looking actually really good right now. Uh, we can do a little bit something over here as well. So let me just do again. Control C, Control F, Object, Path, Offset Path. Give it a stroke of 30. Uh, select these two this time. Shift M, and we can probably delete this one. All right, and uh, we can go ahead and delete the outside part. Yeah, there we go. It's looking pretty good. This looks like a really good day and I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of this and I'm gonna come, come here and click on this button which is the Pathfinder tool under the Unite option under the Pathfinder tool. If you guys don't have it, you can go to Window and choose Pathfinder right over here. And now this is a single object. Okay, we have something we can, we don't need that. Let's just cut that off and uh, this is looking pretty good. So before we finish, finish off, uh, the final part we wanna do is we're gonna utilize this part of the strokes that we left. So I'm gonna select this stroke over here. I'm gonna come over here and just uh, place it exactly as uh, where it should uh, be aligned. There we go, we got a snap over there. Let's do the same thing and we can come here and uh, put this right over here. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and manually move this up. There we go. And uh, we, where's the stroke? Yeah, the, the stroke is right over here. I'm gonna select and set this to a black color so we can actually differentiate it so you guys can have a better look. All right, so there we go. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna come here to the stroke and probably set that down to 10, all right? So uh, maybe five, not quite sure how this is gonna turn out, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, with this both select, I'm gonna right click, choose, go to arrange and choose bring to front. And that's gonna bring it up on top of this logo that we have over here. Select this and select the stroke, object, path, sorry, expand. And that gives us a solid object now. And probably we should be able to cut this off. So let's select everything. Shift M on the keyboard and we can go ahead and manually cut out these parts. So let me just press this, Shift M. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit more closer. And uh, we can go ahead and start cutting out all these parts. Right, we don't need only this, 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 okay. Uh, what else do we need? We don't need this part. And we don't need this part. All right, so let's zoom back. Let's see what we've got. So we can go ahead and take this and delete it. Take this part and delete it. And we have a different kind of a D over here. Now, uh, kind of mixed, missed this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rewind back and fix that part. And I'm gonna add something that looks like this. It looks really clean, really good. I, I, I just love it, it looks amazing. Uh, this is another simple element that you can add to your monogram logos. It doesn't have to have this inner cut. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really learned something and, you know, you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to mention in the comment section down below. You can connect me on Twitter or send me an email. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.